Hello, today I'm going to be reviewing the ASA Pyramid Mini 806 and this is ASA's latest Mini ITX case and I think you'll agree it's absolutely stunning. So as you'd expect with a case that looks this good it isn't going to be cheap and this case is currently retailing for just under £250. I couldn't actually find it on sale anywhere in the UK and had to get this unit from Germany. And as you'd expect with a case at this price point the build quality is exceptional. So this case is made up of a combination of steel, aluminium and tempered glass and it comes as a single outer panel which can be removed from the case by loosening the four thumb screws at the bottom of the case. Okay looking at the case from top to bottom at the top of the case we've got a removable fan bracket where you will find the only fan mounting point in this case. The case only supports a single 120mm fan and there's a single 120mm Hurricane 2 digital RGB fan included. Down below the fan bracket you have the option to add a 120mm radiator. And another nice feature of this case is running down from the fan bracket to the motherboard there's a little cable cover hiding the fan wires. Should you prefer to go down the air-cooled route this case supports CPU coolers with a maximum height of 85mm. Working our way down to the case through the next level down is where you're going to install your motherboard. One of the nice things about this case because the outer panel is removed in a single piece with open access to all four panels and because you can remove the fan bracket at the top there's actually plenty of access to the motherboard so you're not going to have any trouble plugging any of the wires into the motherboard as you often do in ITX builds. In front of the motherboard there's a removable SSD or hard drive bracket which will accommodate up to two 2.5 inch SSDs or hard drives. Working our way down to the bottom of the case this is where you're going to find the graphics card. So the case supports graphics cards up to a maximum of 280 millimeters and the graphics card is mounted with the fans facing upwards. It's connected to the motherboard using the supplied 20 centimeter PCIe Gen 3 riser cable. Also down the bottom of the case you're going to install the power supply. So this case is only compatible with SFX power supplies and there's a removal bracket which makes installing the power supply straightforward. Again another nice feature of having the power supply in a separate compartment from the motherboard means the temperature should be improved. However the GPU is in the same compartment so we wonder if GPU temperatures will suffer. Down at the bottom of the case we have the front IO which is fairly limited. There's a power button, a USB 3.0 type A header and we've got an audio jack. Okay so let's have a look at the build. Okay so I have to say as far as mini ITX cases go this was one of the easiest ones to build in. I think that's largely in part to it being open on all four sides and as well having the ability to remove the top fan mounting bracket means that you have easy access to the case. I think being able to build easily in this case means you have to do it in a certain order and I built in this case in a completely different order than what I normally would. And what you want to do is work your way from the bottom upwards. So I started off installing the graphics card and the power supply before moving up to the motherboard and then installing the CPU killer and SSD. And doing it in that way was really straightforward. And I think if you approach the build that way you won't have any problems. However if you try to do it like a traditional build it might be that bit more difficult. I think another key point when it comes to building in this case is I would stay away from cable extensions. There's actually very limited room at the bottom of the case to manage the cables and they're fully on display if you look at the case right hand side. 
So if you do want to get different power supply cables, I would recommend custom cables rather than cable extensions because you're really going to struggle to manage them at the bottom of the case. Okay, going on to some of the things I really liked about the case, and I think the first is the build quality. The build quality is exceptional. This feels like a really premium case, and it was a real pleasure to build in. I think it's really well thought out as well. I love the little cable cover that runs down the front of the case, hiding the wires coming from the fan bracket. I think the included fan looks absolutely great. And one of the nice things about this fan is it also looks great in an exhaust configuration with the front of the fan facing away from yourself. Most fans look great when their front of it is facing you, but the back side of the fan doesn't look great. This Hurricane 2 digital RGB fan looks great either way round. Another really nice feature about the fans is the wires are quite long. We had no difficulty at all reaching the bottom. And the RGB connector has an additional three pin plug at the end, allowing you to daisy chain in another fan or additional RGB device, which is really great, particularly for a mini ITX build where RGB headers are going to be limited. Got on to some of the things I didn't like, and they're really few and far between. The first importantly to point out is even though this is a mini ITX case, because it's shaped in a pyramid, the footprint at the bottom of it is actually quite large. So it's probably actually going to take up a similar amount of space on your desk as a mid tower would. So you're doing away with one of the big advantages of a mini ITX case is you can't fit it into that narrow space on a small desk or on a shelf. The other thing I was a little bit unsure about was the GPU placement. The GPU at the bottom is installed with the fans facing up the way, pretty close to the bracket above where the motherboard is mounted on. And it would have made more sense to me to have it installed with the intake fans facing the bottom of the case where it could get fresh air. But again, there may be a very good reason why ASA have done that. So we're gonna to need to go on and have a look at the thermal testing to see if there is. So let's do that. Okay, so the first configuration I wanted to look at was my original build. And that was with the ASUS 120mm AIO, but using the supplied Hurricane 2 digital RGB fan instead of the fan that came with the AIO. And I had installed this fan originally in an intake position at the top. And my reason for doing that was that most AIOs tend to work better when they're getting fresh air from outside the case rather than hot air from inside the case. And given that I was concerned about the GPU becoming quite hot, I was worried if I had the radiator installed in an exhaust position, it was only really going to see hot air from the GPU and it was going to adversely affect the temperature. So that was my thinking behind this and that was the reason I had went with my original configuration. Okay, so before we look at the temperatures of that original build, I have done another build using similar hardware in the Lian Li T150. So I am going to put that up for reference. Importantly, that build did have an additional three case fans, so we can't compare exactly like with like. Okay, so going on to look at the temperatures at idle. So both the CPU and GPU idled at a minimum temperature of 37 degrees C. So the CPU was only one degree hotter than in the TU150, while the GPU was a whopping six degrees hotter than in the TU150. So this supports some of my initial concerns about the GPU placement in this case. Unfortunately, with my T150 build, I didn't record any noise levels, although this particular build here has very acceptable noise levels of idle at 36 decibels. For the load test, I ran a 30 minute IDA64 stability test with all components in the system being stressed for 30 minutes and recorded the maximum CPU and GPU temperature over that period. So the maximum CPU temperature over that test was 91 degrees C, which was seven degrees cooler than in the TU150. It is important to note in my TU150 build, the radiator was set to exhaust, whereas in this build, it was set to intake. So the two can't be compared directly with each other. So again, my initial concerns with the GPU temperature in this case seem to be improved right again here with the GPU reaching a maximum temperature of 82 degrees C during the IDA64 stability test, which was 12 degrees hotter than it did in the TU150. Again, noise levels were a very acceptable 44 decibels, 
but this is probably down to having only one fan in the build. Okay, so while this configuration gave you some very acceptable CPU temperatures, the GPU temperatures weren't that great, but there was a bigger problem. And that was that all the hot air was now coming out of these gaps at the bottom of the case. It was then bouncing out along the desk and up into your face, and it was actually really unpleasant to be sitting beside the PC while it was running the IDA64 stability test. So it now makes sense as why ASA shipped the case with the fan at the top in an exhaust position. In this case, they have designed it so that you intake air at the bottom and exhaust it out the top. So the next configuration we were going to test was simply flipping the fan round on the top bracket so that it was now exhausting air out the top of the case. Okay, so going on to look at the temperatures here, this time the CPU idled at two degrees hotter than it did with the top fan as intake, as you would expect. We were now um, exhausting hot air through the radiator rather than cool air in from the top of the case. Having the fan in this orientation seemed to promote air through through the case as GPU temperatures came down by five degrees at idle. This configuration was, however, slightly noisier by two decibels. Okay, so going on to look at temperatures during the IDA64 stability test, and there was really an alarming increase in CPU temperatures. So having the fan set to exhaust rather than intake resulted in a whopping 13 degree increase in CPU temperatures during the stress test. GPU temperatures were, however, 5 degrees cooler. And again, there was slightly noisier in this configuration by 1 decibel. Okay, so having the fan at the top as exhaust had certainly improved airflow through the case, intaking from the bottom, exhausting at the top, and this had reduced GPU temperatures. The other thing it had done is it had made sitting beside the case much more pleasant. The air coming out the top certainly didn't affect me sitting beside the PC, and it was much more pleasant to sit here. Although we had created a, quite a big problem with the CPU temperatures. As you'd expect, taking hot air from the GPU and blowing it through the radiator versus taking cooler in the top and blowing it through the radiator had significantly resulted in the CPU temperatures going up. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to test was if I replaced the Hurricane 2 digital RGB fan with the fan that came with the AIO, leaving it in the exhaust position. And the reason for doing this is I was assuming this fan is actually a case fan optimised for airflow rather than static pressure. So if we added a fan that was optimised for static pressure, and I know the one that comes with the AIO is, would that help with the bad CPU temperatures that we were now getting? Okay, so looking at the temperatures at idle, the CPU idled one degree hotter, while the GPU was one degree cooler. So really no significant difference overall. The noise levels were slightly quieter with the stock AIO fan down by 2 decibels. So looking at the temperatures under load, we got quite a big improvement in CPU temperatures down by 6 degrees just by changing the fan and keeping it in the same orientation. And obviously this fan was pushing more air through the case because the GPU temperatures also dropped by 3 degrees C. This was, however, associated with much more noise, and noise levels were up by 5 decibels. Okay, so that was certainly more of a response to changing the fan out than what I was expecting. We now had CPU temperatures which were exactly the same as in the TU-150, and GPU temperatures that were only 4 degrees away from what I was getting in the TU-150. And to put that in context, the TU-150 had an additional 3 intake fans, with two of them directly under the GPU intake fans, blowing cool air from underneath the case into them. So given that we were quite close to that, this was actually pretty impressive. There was, however, one big problem, and that was that the stock fan that came with the I.O. didn't look very good. And I think you'll agree it was no match for the Hurricane 2 digital RGB fan that came with the case. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do was see was there any way I could get the best of both worlds to have a build which looked good, but also ran cool. So what I decided to test was leaving the stock case fan on top of the removable fan bracket in an exhaust position, 
but also adding the IIO fan to the other side of the radiator, also in an exhaust configuration, giving us a push-pull configuration. And this looked really well, and in general, adding an extra fan onto a radiator should improve temperatures as well. Okay, so this configuration gave us the best idle temperatures in this case. The CPU idled at 39 degrees C, while the GPU idled at 31 degrees C. And interestingly, the GPU temperature was exactly the same as we got in the TU-150. This was, however, associated with significantly more noise at idle, with noise levels up to 41 decibels, an additional 5 decibels from our original build. Looking at the temperatures under load, adding the additional fan in the push-pull configuration brought the CPU temperatures down by an additional 3 degrees C, and the GPU temperatures down by an additional 2 degrees C. It was, however, associated with an additional 2 decibels of extra noise. So this last set of results were really impressive. We now had CPU temperatures 3 degrees cooler than what we were getting in the TU-150, and GPU temperatures only 2 degrees hotter than the TU-150, which is really impressive given the design of the two cases. There was, however, a significant increase in noise levels with the modifications from our original build. And although I don't have noise levels to compare to the TU-150, it certainly wasn't one of the quietest builds that I have made, so the noise levels were probably comparable between the two. Okay, so what have I learnt from doing all this thermal testing? And I think the first thing is that you should leave the fan on top of the removable brackets in an exhaust position. And while flipping it round, particularly on a radiator, will give you better CPU temperatures, it interferes with airflow through the case adversely in that it's going to bring hot air out the bottom and it's going to be really unpleasant to sit beside the computer and also you're going to heat up your GPU by doing this. Okay, I think the second thing I've learned really depends on what is most important to you, whether it is your thermals, your aesthetics or your acoustics. Um, I think what goes with I say is the Hurricane 2 digital RGB fan that comes with the case is absolutely stunning looking, but it is not a good radiator fan. And I can't recommend putting this on a radiator in this case by itself because it's really going to adversely affect the thermals. The one problem I had was that while my radiator fan was pretty good for cooling, it didn't look anywhere near as good as this fan and I had ruined the look of the build by swapping the fan out. So I think the only way I could get good thermals but good aesthetics in this build was to add both fans to the radiator in a push-pull configuration. And while that did bring some extra noise, for me, it was worth it. And this would be the configuration I would recommend you do if you're building in this case. Okay, so to sum up, I think the ASA Pyramid Mini 806 is a great case. It's not a cheap case, but I think you get what you pay for. And I think what you're paying for is the wow factor. You're getting something fairly unique that's going to look great on your desk. I think anybody that comes into your room is going to be drawn to it because that's certainly what's happened to me over the last week. People have been coming in and going, wow, what's this? And have been going to have a look at it. They haven't been doing that to the other PCs that I have built. So while this is a bit more expensive, it is going to create a lot of attention and has that Y factor to it. I thought the cooling was going to be more of a problem, but provided you lay out your cooling the way I'm recommended, as well as having a great looking case, you can get it to run to very acceptable levels. Okay, so hopefully you find this video useful. I have done a full step-by-step -step build guide for this case, and I'll put a link to that in the description. So if you're thinking of building in this case, it's worth checking that out. If you've enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please click that subscribe button. It's going to help me grow the channel. Likewise, if you're new to the channel, I have loads of other PC build videos and related content on the channel. So please go ahead and check that out. Thanks for watching.